We get to the back at Costco, and he's downed about half of that soda, and he stands next to a trash can oh, and no. will oh, not no. move. Oh, no. And he is as flushed as oh. flushed can be, oh. and has his hand over his mouth, and he's like, Mom, I, I don't think I can move. I think I, I think I need to stay right here. And I looked at him, I said, son, if you throw up in the middle of Costco, I am going to be so embarrassed. Can you make it to the bathroom? Welcome to A Home That Heals. I'm Dee, along with my daughter, Bree, and we're so glad you're joining us today. Have you noticed the subtle messages being sent to parents, grandparents, and families across the country that sound something like this? You just aren't quite enough for your kids. You're not knowledgeable enough. You're not the expert. Somebody else could do a better job. But we know this, at least in our heads we know this, God's message doesn't sound like that at all. His message reminds us that He'll equip and guide us and has uniquely made us for this and for our kids. Today on A Home That Heals, we explore an idea so simple, if it weren't from God's design, it would almost seem laughable. It's a powerful way to launch a preemptive strike against the deadliest drug our country has ever seen. So hang on. That's now on A Home That Heals. Those of you that are with us all the time, you know we've been talking about two things that we just cannot afford to ignore. Two things that are coming into our worlds without sometimes any invitation at all but they, they're they dangerous. So if you want to hear about these two things, we'd encourage you to listen to episode 210. You'll get the lowdown on what we're really focusing on, and that's this drug fentanyl and also pornography and how it affects our kids and our families. But today, we're going to focus on the reality that parents are facing with that drug fentanyl because it is so deadly. I was on social media the other day just flipping through and it was so timely because we've been talking about this and researching it a lot and it's a local police department put out all these videos of um, just different uh, substances, you know, I mean, even like fruit. <laughs> and, oh, really? Um, and, uh, but also drugs, you know, and it ends with the amount of fentanyl that could kill you that is right next to a ladybug. Mm. I mean, that is how mm. small. We'll, we'll post it. I think I can share it on our social media if I can. I'll share it with you guys because it was just shocking. You mm-hmm. know, it really mm-hmm. is one of those drugs that just shocks you. Um, all drugs are bad. <laughs> all drugs obviously have their negative effect. But I think fentanyl really is waking us up, but it's also gripping people Mm -hmm. with this fear. And when we face these issues that are so big and so huge, obviously we ask, like, where do we start? Where Mm -hmm. are we even supposed to begin? Yeah. So last week, we we focused on where we start, right? That's right. Always (laughs) prayer. I mean, that is, and you know, sometimes we say, say it, it's such, it's kind of becomes a cliche in the Christian world. And Uh, We were just reminded in Ephesians this last week about we serve this powerful, almighty, all-knowing God. And our prayers aren't just, okay, a to-do list item. They really are where we start with everything. And once we do that, it is amazing to start watching God work and to know that he will lead and guide us. So again, just remind you that, uh, let's see, is that episode 211, I think, Mm -hmm. that we talked about prayer. And so we're just encouraging you that you are not alone in this fight. We have the God of the universe um, right there by our side, leading us and guiding us in this. And it's something you can do immediately. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm that kind of person. Mm -hmm. I want to know what I can do today. I don't want to know what I need to do in 10 years. I want to know, or a year from now, I want to know what I can start doing immediately or what I don't have to research. You know, I, I do love research, but I want to get through the research so I know what to do. And I know, you know, what has to be done with prayer and with being in the word of God. That is something you can start immediately. It doesn't take any research. It doesn't take any, you know, time to, you don't have to be the most knowledgeable and, you know, some theologian to start praying to your awesome God who gives abundantly when we ask um, for more than more than what we could even imagine. Mm-hmm. I mean, what he could do through your family. And can I just say that as you become aware of these issues, like you have become so much more aware of fentanyl and, and the fact that we mentioned in the previous episode that it's being disguised as candy, there, there are people really out to 
addict uh, to grab our kids and, and make them addicts. So as you become aware of those things, it is easy to just start with fear because it, it seems so big. But when you feel fearful, you know, there's that verse in the Bible, when I am afraid, what is it? When I am I afraid, I will trust in you. Trust in you. A song. It's a little song, yeah, very, very near and dear to my heart. And so that's the first thing. But now, then we, then, but we're, we're women. So, okay, what's next? What's next on the to-do list, Brie? All right, we prayed. <laughs> yeah. I'm up off my knees now. What do I do? Okay. I want to go to battle. And, you know, there's political answers to that question. And those are great discussions to have. But today, what we want to focus on are what can we do in our homes with our kids starting today? And I, I really have been contemplating this and thinking about this because I do. I want to start helping my kids understand today what, um, what could affect them for the rest of their lives, mm-hmm. you know? And when you're talking, to, I, I don't really want to wait for fentanyl to show up on my doorstep. I don't really want to wait for my kid to be exposed to um, fentanyl. Or, or, I mean, a lot of these kids, what's so sad is it's, they're not being asked, hey, do you want to take fentanyl? They're mm-hmm. being told, hey, um, uh, you know, Adderall can help you stay up so that you can study more for your test and I've got a pill. And so they think it's just Adderall or they think it's just... Um, you know, another type of drug that treats ADHD that will help them concentrate more and stay awake longer. And it's laced with fentanyl. So I don't want to wait for those things to show up, those opportunities to show up um, and come looking for my kid. I want to prepare them today. I have younger kids. And so I think there's some things that we'll talk about, you know, with older kids, but you can start with younger kids too. And I really truly believe that if you start helping your children understand and realize how everything they put into their bodies affects their bodies, either in a positive way or a negative way, because that's the way God designed our bodies. Mm -hmm. God created their bodies so absolutely marvelous, marvelously that every inner working thing that he created is affected by the food they eat, by the amount of sunlight they get, by the amount of time they spend outside in fresh air, by the water they drink. I mean, to the lotion they put on their skin, everything affects the inner working functions of their body in a good way or a bad way. Mm -hmm. And when they start having that mentality from a young age and they start understanding that things affect them, they begin to think critically about what they put in their bodies. They start thinking critically about what they do with their bodies. And that naturally leads them to a path that when they are confronted with a drug, whether it's fentanyl or meth or, you know, heroin, whatever it is, doesn't have to be directly, just specifically fentanyl, anything, or just like that, putting a drug into their bodies that wasn't prescribed to them, like Adderall or some other drug, hopefully they will have been raised up along the path every single day by their mama or their dad to think critically about what they put into their bodies. You know, I I work with high school kids now, and I've seen a couple of things that would really relate to what you're talking about. One is kids right now are are under a lot of stress because it's the end of the quarter, and so they're taking tests, and they're giving speeches, and they're doing all these things. And I see the stress on their face, and I see how tired they are. Mm. And so I can see when you were talking about uh, the possibility of a student saying, hey, I've got something that'll help you, you know, the next few days. Yeah. If you don't have this awareness that right now in our country, those are those avenues that are getting to kids who would otherwise never try an illicit drug, never in a million years. But you combine the need, the stress, the lack of sleep, all those things that teenagers face with the availability that is becoming so prevalent uh, in all of our communities. I just saw a map the other day of our state, which is a rural state, and an area that you like to think is a little bit insulated from all of this. Yet we show up on that map as one of the places where these drug cartels are especially established and proliferating these drugs into the community that might it might say it's Adderall or some drug like that. And not that kids should take it anyway um, when they haven't been prescribed, but Yet, those are the very drugs that they are lacing with 
this fentanyl that is so dangerous. So, okay, so that's one thing. I see the need. I see that kids, this, these are real issues that kids are dealing with, and the pressure sometimes causes them to do things they wouldn't do. But the other thing that I am seeing is that students are becoming a little more aware of how their bodies react to things because it has become, you know, like especially if they're athletes or people like that that you know want to perform at a high level, there's a lot of buzz about that kind of thing out there. And I have a student, for example, who really realized that soy and dairy were affecting her performance on the basketball court. Really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And That's so awesome. I had given the students in my life skills class a 21-day challenge and they could choose whatever challenge they wanted to do within reason. Had to be something that was a challenge, <laughs> you know. But hers was to eliminate soy and dairy as much as possible and to see if it would help her performance. So I just read her diary the other night. I had them keep a journal. And it was so interesting to watch through that 21 days how she became more aware of how her body was reacting. And um, Oh, that's so good. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. And I, I brought her diary with me today. And she just said, you know, today was my seventh day of my 21-day challenge. Yesterday, I broke my streak and ate cookies. <laughs> and I'm still feeling the effects today. You know, this just kind of goes on. She doesn't break it very many times. She's really pretty disciplined young woman. But, um, but as she went along, she started to talk about how uh, she would be offered something and it was easier to not take it because she knew her body was going to you know, have a, have a reaction to it and that she had a game coming up, you know, mm -hmm. so she had some motivation. Um, also, I noticed that as she was writing about this, she, keeping the journal was really key so that mm. she could keep track of how she was feeling. But I'll just have to read you her last, her last day. She said, today was my last day of my 21 day challenge, exclamation point. I was successful in this challenge for most of the days after my efforts, I'm feeling as though I'm performing closer to my full potential in all my sports. This sense of success is extremely satisfying and rewarding. These feelings make me want to continue this challenge even further. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, her, but she wasn't alone. I had quite a few students that either were getting rid of sugar or something so that they were making that body, food, what I put in my body connection. Mm -hmm. And kind of to your point, I think the younger you make kids aware of that, the better, mm -hmm. and hopefully it, within balance. I mean, you know, you don't want to just be a total Grinch all the time about, I mean, maybe you do, but <laughs> I, I don't think you do probably all the time. there's a downside to that too. Mm -hmm. it, it is teaching kids balance and teaching them awareness so that they yeah. can make yeah. critical decisions. You know, I, um, I grew up, I, I, if you're listening and you grew up, you know, in my time frame, in the 80s, you know, if you can remember you know, the, the squeeze it. Oh the boy. We, kept, yeah. it. we <laughs> yeah. lived on Kool-Aid squeeze it. I was thinking about it. Like my summer days were grab a Kool-Aid squeeze it, a Smarties wristband on my wrist <laughs> so that, you know, I could chew off <laughs> a candy when I needed. And, um, I don't know, soda pop and just well, what kind of mother raised you? I don't know, oh, but no. I, I love you mom, but I gotta be honest. I didn't really I thought, well, I survived. Like, I was fine. Hey, <laughs> I, didn't I die. survived on bologna sandwiches every day of my young life. I'm yeah. not kidding. That was my lunch. Every single I'm day was a bologna really sandwich. I'm really glad you didn't make me live on bologna <laughs> no, sandwiches. So it wasn't all that. Kool-Aid and Smarties are way better. But I just had this mind frame that, you know, I, I wasn't sick all the time. You know, because I didn't physically see something, you know, bad happening to my body. I wasn't as connected. Now, fast forward, I do think there is kind of this revolution happening. I mean, all everywhere you go, people are talking, you know, organic versus not organic, gluten, whole food, processed food, color dyes, you know, all this kind of stuff. And and it's great that people are starting to talk about food yeah, and the way it important. affects our body, but on the on the flip side, it also can swing too far where we live in, in fear, you know, and, and we aren't encouraging anybody to live in fear and to sit there and read the diet or read the dice, read the labels because they want, they think that somehow they can play God and make them live an extra day. But we do want to live more abundantly. And we do want to live like, I loved how she said her body was able to operate at her, you know, closer to mm -hmm, her mm -hmm. optimal Again, what I hear is the way God designed our body to operate. Yeah. You know, God did design us. We can't skirt around the fact that God 
designed us to eat the food that he created for us and to live in the world that he created for us that isn't four walls and isn't, you know, locked inside all the time and food that is grown in the beautiful ground and the dirt that he made versus the you know, lab down the street. So there, there's going to be consequences when we put things in our body that weren't made for it. So let's talk about just, you know, how do we really instill this mindset and these critical thinking skills into our kids um, so that when they face, you know, anything, putting any, I mean, we could talk about drugs. Yeah, that's kind of what we're focusing on. But also it can just be, you know, if they're going to gorge on, you know, food that isn't healthy and never eat an apple for mm-hmm. a year, mm-hmm. they might they might have some consequences for that too. And so this can this can be helpful not just in one area, but in multiple areas. So number one, I would say the biggest thing that I've noticed as we've started to really connect um, what we're eating with how we're feeling is help our kids connect that too. You can see when your kid's having a sugar crash, right? Like yeah. you oh, can yeah. see, okay, he just had a soda, a candy bar, and then grandma and grandpa gave him some cupcakes. <laughs> and now- Not very often. <laughs> <laughs> I've cut way back. Okay. And now he's having a meltdown. And instead of getting frustrated with that child or, you know, or just saying, snap out of it, help him connect it. Help him, hey, bud, you know what? What did, what'd you have to eat recently? You know, help him see it. Don't just know it in your own mind, but help him see it too. We, we had a recent episode of this. One of my kiddos, he, we figured out dairy doesn't really settle well with mm-hmm. his stomach. Mm-hmm. So he knows that if he's going to have ice cream or something like that, he, he probably should only have a little bit. And, and he's probably not going to feel great, you know, afterwards. And he just knows that. Well, Friday night came and I wanted to be the cool mom. I wanted to be the yes mom. We kind of mm-hmm, talked about that mm-hmm. a few episodes ago. I just, I didn't want to be the no mom tonight. So I, we went to Chick-fil-A and he wanted a milkshake and he was going to buy it with his own money too. And so I said, okay, well, he didn't get the small milkshake. He got the medium oh. milkshake. And they're so good though. <laughs> I'm, oh, they are so good. And I'm thinking to myself like, oh, that is a lot of ice cream, you know, and he might not feel very good. Well, he downs that. Then we go over um, to Costco because I need to pick up a few things. And again, he has his own money. And so he goes and he buys a soda. Oh, to no. Sip Did on. you know? Did you know? I didn't until he bought it. Oh. And um, he. That's the downside of them having their own <laughs> yeah. money. I mean, it's got some good sides, but that is kind of the downside. It does. And so I just thought, okay, well, I'm yes mom tonight. So we're just going to see how this rolls. We get to the back at Costco and he's downed about half of that soda. And he stands next to a trash can oh, and no. will oh, not no. move. Oh, no. And he is as flushed as oh. flushed can be oh. and has his hand over his mouth. And he's like, Mom, I, I don't think I can move. I think I, I think I need to stay right here. And I looked at him. I said, son, if you throw up... <laughs> In the middle of Costco, <laughs> I am going to be so embarrassed. Can you make it to the bathroom? <laughs> is there any way you can make it to the bathroom? And you're at the back of the We're store. The so it's a, yeah, the bathroom's at the front of the, of the store, store, of course. Yeah. And because here we, I don't know, I'm just looking, you know, he's right next to all this food. Oh. I just, <laughs> oh Lord, please don't let him throw up right here. And he, he nodded his head. And so we, we made it, you know, we walked very briskly to the front of the store, but that kid did not feel good all mm, night. Mm. And I kept my mouth shut. You know, I didn't want to. I told jump you too, so. <laughs> I didn't want to jump too quick, but he was the one. He said, you know, I really shouldn't have gotten that soda. And I said, oh, you, you think? <laughs> he said, yeah. And I, I, I had that, I had that big milkshake. I shouldn't have had that was just too mm-hmm. much. That was too much sugar and too much too much dairy. And I loved it. I was like, oh, you made the connection. Yes. That's and good. and this was a, a very physical response that your body had. <laughs> but it's those big moments that then help you to see that even the little things we put in our body over time are going to affect us. And so bring your kids into it. Help them to see um, see how food is affecting them um, or just the fact 
hey, we haven't gotten outside for a while. Like, we haven't gotten some fresh air. Let's go for a walk. Mm -hmm. How much, oh, don't you feel good? Yeah. How does that feel? Yeah, that's so good. Because, you know, like my student, when you connect the feeling with it, that kind of does something in your brain that helps you then recall next time. Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember how that felt. And so I'm going to. I'm going to have a little self-control here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's always helpful. Well, yeah. what else? What are some other things? Because I know you've really been looking into this and, and wanting. Again, this isn't like a panacea by any means. I think you still need to have those frank conversations with your kids, starting young, mm -hmm. about the fact that, that people will offer you things that you shouldn't take if you ha have no idea. And here's why. I, yeah. I believe we need to open our kids' eyes to the danger. Yeah, and we're going to focus yeah. on that on another yeah. podcast too. I think this is just how do we give them that that mindset and mm -hmm. those critical thinking skills? And we kind of mentioned it already, but just helping them see the beauty of what God made and that what God made was good, that the whole foods that he provided for us to enjoy, the plants that we can use for medicine and the fresh air and the sun and the water that all fuel our bodies more than any drug we can get, like even pharmaceutical drug, you know, to help with our anxiety or to help with our vitamin depletion. You know, God God gave us real tangible things that we can do that have far less negative reactions than, um, than, you know, pharmaceutical drugs do. And we can have access to them right away, right now. That reminded me of this last summer I planted, um, stevia yes. and, you know, the sugar replacement or whatever. And, uh, and the kids, they'd go out to the garden and they would, you know, they'd pick the things that they really like, mostly the fruits and stuff. But that stevia plant became a real favorite, which it made me did. happy because it's easy and they can just grab a couple of leaves. And again, it's that natural sugar that isn't quite like putting a teaspoon of sugar in your mouth, but still gives you, you know, that same sense that, oh, I'm eating something right here. It's right here. It's available. I can have it and it's fresh and good. And yeah, I'm glad you reminded me of that. I've got to plant some more of that this summer. Yeah. No, I think the more that we can share, share with each other ideas too, just like that mom, the stevia plant, if, if you have some ideas of how are you bringing more whole food, how are you bringing more of God's design into your home and into your family life and making that connection for your kids so that they can see what God provided is good, will you send those ideas to us or post them on our Facebook or Instagram pages in the comments, anywhere, like let's share with each other because there's a plethora of ideas. You know, there's things our family does that might not work for you, but there's things that you are doing already or end up doing in the future that could help us all, you know, make this connection for our kids. So I, I do, I think that's really important. Um, and just, it is so fascinating as I've learned about this because again, I'm not somebody that grew up thinking about the way things affect my body. In fact, if I think too much about how my organs work or like how to clean out a wound or anything, I have to do a lot of mental strength in order to not pass out <laughs> or throw so up. Like I, I, you're going to love the gift I just bought for you then. I oh forgot. No. I kind of forgot about that. You are, you're kind of weird when it comes to that. I couldn't even talk to you about, oh, I'm trying to remember, like if you'd get a cut or something, you know, and I was going to put something on it. You'd oh, start don't tell to, me what you're going to do. No, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, okay. no, 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 no. Well, guess what I bought for you? Cause I knew you were really <laughs> looking into all of this. And I thought in my mom way, I have a really good idea. And so I ordered you and the kids some anatomy books. Oh no. <laughs> I did. Oh no. no. Seriously. Cause I'll tell you why. So, you know, I've been in doctor's offices a lot with my mom recently and on the wall, you're sitting there waiting for the doctor and they have these cool posters that show everything. You know, the last one was a gas gastroenterologist and you know your stomach and the liver and the kidneys and all the intestines and everything and I was really sorry that he came in when he came in because I was so into it and I know you would be too I'm sure right <laughs> no I'm, well, you're gonna maybe be. you're gonna have to preview the book and highlight the pages that I'll be able to handle well, so but that's anyway. what I'm saying yeah. if I can do it you can do it. if you can if I can learn about this and not pass out and not get this weird feeling in my body, then you can learn about it too, because it is amazing how, yeah, yeah. you know, things affect our nervous system. Cause I just grew up thinking, you know, if I hit my elbow, my elbow's going to hit, you know, hurt, not something that I put in my mouth that goes down to my stomach could potentially affect my brain. You yeah, know, I, that's yeah, not how yeah. I thought. So start learning about this. If you don't already know about it, 
it's fascinating and bring your kids into it. Help them to see how even lotion and shampoo that we put on our body can affect, affect different functions. And then obviously the food and the drinks that we consume and um, help them to think about everything that they eat and drink as either adding a positive reaction or a negative reaction. And that gives them that mentality so that yeah, it, it just mindset. seems obvious that if you were to take drugs, it could potentially affect your body. Where I grew up, I think, in an era where there wasn't as much knowledge about that. All right. Well, those are great ideas. And it's also a good reminder to this grandma to be following along, you know, and really paying attention to, because it's easy to kind of derail things when you're not paying attention. So thanks for the reminder, too. And, and you know what? When we come back... I want to share with you a really well-known Bible verse out of Proverbs. We've all heard it, at least I have, and I think most everybody, a thousand times. But there's something extra there to maybe think about, and I'd like to share that with you next. Before we go, I thought I would share a Bible verse with you that is out of Proverbs 22, 6, and I bet it's memorized by a lot of you. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's right. I can remember my grandma talking about that verse when I was younger. And that verse, I think a lot of us think of it in terms of salvation. You know, like bring up your child in the way that he should go, he or she should go, and they will follow Jesus. You know, that's kind of my go-to sometimes with that verse. But there's um, a lot there when you study it. And you know how we love to study the original language and all of that. Um, If you read this verse in other versions of the Bible, um, they'll use different words for train up, like direct, or maybe start, children off, is, is another phrase that you hear. And the whole idea, when you go back to the original language, is that it, it, it's something about setting aside, narrowing, or hedging in. And oh, can you think about that for just a minute? Because everything you were just talking about in our last segment is trying to, in a very positive way, hedge in and teach them so that their thinking doesn't go off on the wrong path at the wrong time. And so I loved that piece of this um, commentary that I was reading about it. I I enjoy the Bible knowledge commentary. Um, It's a good one. And so that was one area that I thought. And then the other thing was this word way in the way they should go. And the way, of course, means, you know, the proper way. I mean, the thing you should do. But it's also the way of wisdom, and it's from this uh, proper behavior pattern or godly lifestyle that this child will not turn from when he is old. And so I think that the way, as we take a look at that, it's not like just your, you know, it's not just your personality or the way that you you would go, but the way that is the way of the wise. Mm. And that's kind of what we're trying to do with our kids as at whatever stage. And it starts when they're really, really young. You start them off on the right path. And that starting them off on the right path is so essential. Wherever you are right now in this journey, it might be that your kids are little, or it might be that they're teenagers already, and you need to really face some of these issues with them and, and make sure that you get them started on the right path. Because there's a lot of There's a lot of detours up ahead for them, and and we need to make sure they're ready for them. We do, and I think the best way for us to do that is to prepare them to think, Mm -hmm. to think well, Mm -hmm. and just as you were saying, to think with wisdom, and that wisdom only comes from God, and that is why his word is sufficient, and it does give us so much, and that's why his creation is sufficient. You know, we can find mm-hmm. so many truths mm-hmm. and so many great resources in that as well. So, although this may seem really simple to you and it's not revolutionary, no. yet oftentimes we set aside the simple. We push back the simple for something revolutionary when really we we shouldn't have ever abandoned that mm-hmm. because that's what instills those roots that go down deep so into true. our children's lives. 
So true. Oh, yes. All right. Well, we are so glad that you're with us today, and, and we do love hearing from you. We just can't emphasize enough how much we hope that if you're getting something from, from this podcast that's helping you, share it with a friend. Let them know that uh, we want them to be part of this community. We'd love to hear from all of you about what you're doing and how you're finding that God's truth, the, the Word, the things that we find that He gives us in whether it's in nature or in his word, how those are helping your families, please be in touch with us and let us know. A Home That Heals is produced in partnership with 89.5 KTSY. To find out more about them, go to ktsy.org.